Why are we doing this? Well, because Prince Philip told us to. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at the darkest, most disturbing conspiracy theories about the royals. Thought I did a good job, why do you disagree? There's a lot of people spreading nasty rumours about me. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 10. Charles III is a vampire. Questions will be asked about whether he is the right person to deliver the change needed for the monarchy to survive. We're beginning with a more absurd conspiracy theory, but bear with it, there is some basis in fact for this one. Supposedly, this theory has emerged because the king has an interest in Transylvania's history and has said that he's related to Vlad the Impaler. The king must rally support, not just for his leadership, but for the institution he is leading. Now, of course, there's no evidence that Vlad the Impaler was a vampire either, or that vampires actually exist, but this familial connection has got people with more active imaginations talking. Ever since 1948, it's been known that one day he would be king. Similar is the conspiracy that the king, like many influential public figures, is a reptile in disguise. It seems people love theories that the royals aren't what they seem to be. Number 9. Henry VIII's Will Divorce beheaded and died Divorce beheaded survive He's one of the country's most notorious monarchs thanks to his, shall we say, shoddy track record where his wives are concerned. Upon Henry's death, his will was referred to so that his heir could be decided. Catherine of Aragon was one. She failed to give me a son. I had to ask her for a divorce. That broke up her heart, of course. But more importantly, the will determined who could be made regent to King Edward VI, who was only nine when his father died. Lovely Jane Seymour was three, the love of a lifetime for me. She gave me a son, little Prince Ed. Then poor old Jane went and dropped dead. It's rumoured that courtiers and noblemen forged and edited the will revised a month before the king's death to try and ensure the country would remain Protestant after Henry's death rather than revert to Catholicism. This didn't exactly go to plan though, since Mary I had a habit of burning Protestants when she ousted Edward's heir, Lady Jane Grey. I lay on my deathbed aged just 55, lucky Catherine the last stayed alive. I mean how unfair. Number 8. Prince Harry's father. Back to the current royals, and we're sure you've heard this one before. James Hewitt, your royal highness. Officer Hewitt, I hear you offer lessons. Uh, there's only one type of lesson I offer, riding lessons. Thanks to his red hair, it's been rumoured for decades that the king isn't Prince Harry's father at all, and that this could contribute to how removed from royal life Harry appears to be, especially now. I gave him the heave home. Everyone else too. When it comes to his paternity, all eyes fall on Major James Hewitt, Princess Diana's red-headed riding instructor that she had an affair with. Though I assumed your husband gives you riding lessons. He's tried, he's not very good. However, the dates don't really add up, and Diana herself has said that Harry's red hair came from her side of the family, as the Spencers have the ginger gene. Any more telephone calls from Major Hewitt? Make sure to say I'm out. I don't want to hear from him. Even Prince Harry briefly thought the rumours might be true, as he said in his book. Number 7. Elizabeth I Charles III secretly being a vampire is one thing, but for centuries, stories have circulated that Queen Elizabeth I was a man. Petite nose, perfect teeth, porcelain skin. Why, however did you manage to capture my good looks? The evidence for this, if there can be said to be any, is that she never married and never had a child, though plenty of modern women don't get married and don't have kids either. This baffling theory claims that the real Elizabeth died when she was nine and was replaced by a boy in disguise. It was a son I wanted, so I divorced her mother. Then wife two had another. A girl, not again. Oi, that's me you're talking about. Why they wouldn't use a girl in disguise is anyone's guess, but the theory has been widely dismissed as being sexist, since the idea is that she can't possibly have been such a good military leader if she was a woman. Oh, I never had an heir, so our reign ended there. We may not have been fair, but, but we, we were never done. Number 6. Princess Margaret's Secret Mary? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodness. 
From a royal with no heirs to a royal who may have had a secret heir, did Princess Margaret have a third child nobody knows about? With her husband, the Earl of Snowdon, Margaret had two children, David and Sarah. But one man, Robert Brown, has been fighting for years to prove that he's the son of Margaret and Peter Townsend, the older, divorced man she was forbidden from marrying. Obviously, we want Margaret to be happy and have the man she wants. Yes. But we must do everything in our power to protect you as queen and as a sister. Brown didn't come out of the woodwork until after Margaret's death in 2002, while Townsend died in 1995. Very convenient for Brown. Brown has been demanding to see Princess Margaret's will, and the royals, unsurprisingly, don't want that to happen. You can recognize that as well. It's a sensitivity of you two together. Number five, the Bowes Lion Cousins. This one's a bit tricky, because we know that the Bowes Lion Cousins were institutionalised, but how much contact they had with the royal is a bit muddier. I only ask because I am aware, through professional colleagues, of the sisters. Sisters? This is all thanks to The Crown, which dramatises Princess Margaret discovering these long-lost cousins who have been locked away and forgotten, speaking to the cruelty of the royal family. It's complicated. No, it's not. It's wicked and it's cold-hearted. It's cruel. It's true that their existence wasn't known to the public because the sisters, Nerissa and Catherine, were disabled and that their deaths were misrecorded. Nerissa deceased 1940. Catherine deceased 1961. There it is in black and white. This, however, is believed to be an error rather than a conspiracy. One relative, David Bowes Lyon, said on the record that the senior royals always knew about their cousins, and within the family, it wasn't a secret. Number four, Kate Middleton. The rumour that's got everyone talking about is the mysterious disappearance of the Princess of Wales in 2024. In December 2023, Her Royal Highness underwent abdominal surgery, and the palace discovered that she wouldn't return to royal duties for some time afterwards. This is a debating point, photographed for the first time since uh, surgery in December. Uh, taken and published on gossip sites in the US and Australia. Despite this announcement, conspiracies have still circulated online that something has happened to Kate and that the royals are covering it up. We've been told she's not doing any public duties until after Easter. You know, people have surgery. They need time off work to recover. I think that's what's happened here. Theories range from a secret pregnancy to her being gravely ill, or perhaps even that she's died and they don't want anyone to know. Regardless, people are doing everything possible to pry into the royals' lives. You know, and she's not she's not an heir to the throne. She's not well, in the direct line of the succession. Just and she's a let's human give a being. Break. Yeah, she's a human oh, being she, recovering. Oh. Number 3, the prince is in the tower. Never took the crown with the legal power. Never killed my nephews. The prince is in the tower. Another blast from the past. How much do you really know about King Richard III? Is it true that he locked up his rival claimants to the throne, Edward V and Prince Richard, and left them to die? Well, nobody knows. My brother Edward died, his kids too young to rule, so I took the throne. Why not? I'm nobody's fool. It's true that Richard III was the regent to Edward V's father for a while, and that they did live in the Tower of London, but nobody knows how or when they died. Thomas More wrote a history, said I murdered Edward's boys. Shakespeare said their death was an evil ploy. Richard III definitely had reason to order their deaths, since they threatened his claim to the throne, but would anybody really go so far as to harm two children, even in the 15th century? Never bumped off those harmless young heirs. Never buried them under the Tower of London stairs. Ne Remains have been found, but we're not sure which, if any, are the real princes. Number two, Princess Diana. You could fill a book with conspiracy theories about Princess Diana, and many people have. We just get a chauffeur drunk. Slightly drunk. <laughs> and, uh and assume that he'll crash the car. Largely, the conspiracies are concerned with her tragic death in 1997, when her car crashed in Paris while being chased by paparazzi. Plus, people always die in car crashes, don't they? Yes, always. And uh, <laughs> people who drive over the limit always crash. What we're organising here, my friends, is a watertight hit. These theories have circulated for years, largely thanks to Mohammed Al-Fayed at the Daily Express, as people say her death was ordered by the royal family. Why? 
Various reasons, from that Diana was too popular, to that they were trying to hide a pregnancy. Um, why is he doing it? Well, because she's so popular. She's beautiful and everyone loves her. We need to kill her now so that people will go off her. Of course. <laughs> Details about the accident have also been picked apart, with people wondering why she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, whether Charles had another mistress, and what was going on with that white Fiat Uno. Number one, Jack the Ripper. Is it possible, sir, that the killer is an educated man? Perhaps someone who studied medicine, but who is in fact not a surgeon himself. To this day, we don't know who Jack the Ripper was, and it seems unlikely we ever will. Because of the mystery surrounding him, there are lots of theories about who he might have been and why he was able to go uncaught, including one that blames the royals for covering it up. You know him, Daddy. Those whom God has joined together. Supposedly, Queen Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale, who would one day have been king had he not died in 1892, was the Ripper. Did they ask you to help them cover up the prince's secret marriage? There isn't really any evidence for this, though. Indeed, there's actually a lot of evidence that he wasn't in London at all during late 1888, when the murders happened. But the theory lives on among Ripperologists and amateur historians. Let us know in the comments if you think these theories have any truth to them. Can you imagine the headlines if it were to get out? What people would say. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.